The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have the servants recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What would your life look like if you had no fear? What would your life look like as a disciple of Jesus if you lived completely fearlessly for him? What would it look like? Perhaps that's good fodder for the ride home uh, conversation, for the dinner table today. I'll give you a couple things to think about because Jesus today, in the preface to today's reading, tells us to be not afraid any longer, for your Father desires to give you the kingdom. Be not afraid any longer. And he's speaking to us today about any insecurity we might have that would have us hang on to our possessions and put them ahead of love. So in the extended reading, Jesus goes on to tell several parables about how to be good stewards and how to live always as a good steward of our relationship with him, putting our possessions to the best use for all of the world. In constant anticipation of him arriving as a friend and not to see his arrival as a, a thief who wants to steal what we think is ours, because it's not ours, it's all his. So what would your life look like as a disciple of Jesus if you lived completely fearlessly? Two types of fears I offer for your reflection today that might help us allow Jesus to take fears away and allow us to live in ready reception of the kingdom already here and now. Two types of fears. It's, one is the fear of placing love above all else. A fear of placing love above all else. And then a fear of vulnerability. When I was seven, which was a long time ago, I still have a vivid memory of asking my mother repeatedly for a certain toy at a certain store. And I was even uncomfortable as I was asking, but I could tell that I was wearing her down and that I would win the thing. Winning the thing came at great cost. I never enjoyed the toy. I kind of put it off to the side, maybe played with it once to demonstrate to my mother that I appreciated her spending money, and then threw it away because it damaged my relationship with my mother. She relented. She gave in. And I knew that I had damaged, I had ruptured some type of relationship with the one who had given me life and was caring for me beyond my own desires. I've lived in perpetual fear of my capacity to put my love of things ahead of love. And so I've repeatedly asked God to remove from me any fear I have of placing love above possessions, a love of people, a love of the source of love above my desire to find my security in the things of this world. We learn a lot when we're seven 
that we can inadvertently forget later on in life. Thank God for that memory and for my mother. Another good friend of mine lost his mother just 11 months ago, and he says, I wish I had her here. I kept her at arm's length when she was living, and I wish I could hear her voice again. What a gift, the source of love for us. We must learn to live today. And so I offer for your continued reflection how we allow Jesus to take away any fear we have of placing love above things, love that endures over things that are passing away. That perhaps opens the door for working on our fear of vulnerability. You know, the common fears that we hear about are public speaking and death and failure. Maybe we can lump those all under the category of vulnerability. We are called to speak publicly praise to God for all time in heaven. We better allow Jesus to remove our fear of public speaking. In terms of death, uh, none of us gets out of this world alive. We're all going to die. Better to embrace it and recognize the gift of learning now about the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, or hell, and knowing that God desires to serve us. Allowing Jesus to remove any fear of vulnerability. What happens when he takes away our fear of being vulnerable? Well, we're no longer scandalized to consider that our God is a vulnerable God. Our God who has been victorious over death through his vulnerability, coming to us as an infant dependent on the love of others. Vulnerable to the point of serving and not being served. Vulnerable to offering himself. Let us not be scandalized that God comes to us in the most vulnerable. And he reminds us in the Gospel of Matthew, you'll encounter me as you encounter those who are most vulnerable in this world. Jesus, remove from us any fear of vulnerability, for that's where we meet you. That's where we hear you and willingly live, according to your words, to sell our possessions, give alms, store up our treasures in heaven. That's how we recognize Jesus. You know, a recent Pew Research study came out again, and it reminds us what we know, and that is we can sometimes or often have doubt. It reminds us that most Catholics and even many church-going Catholics do not believe in the real presence of Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. Don't be scandalized. God is a vulnerable God. I take it as an opportunity to pray with the father of the sick son from the Gospel of Matthew. That father who humbly expressed his doubt to Jesus, as well as any little remaining bits of faith. When Jesus tells him everything is possible for God, do you believe this? He said, I do believe, Jesus. Help my unbelief. And that triggered Jesus immediately revealing his glory and healing his son. Don't be scandalized that we have a vulnerable God who comes to us under ordinary appearance. That is what conquers death. And that's what we're invited into vulnerably. That's how we recognize our Lord. That's how we live to reveal our Lord to the world. You know, living by placing love above things and living vulnerably is really what allows us to live our heart's desire to receive the kingdom and to live this radical thing called communion, recognizing all as gift, offering back all, willingly following Abraham, our model of faith, trusting that God will provide as we place all in his hands, living in constant anticipation and readiness for Jesus to come back at any hour because he's our friend and he's not a thief. Be not afraid any longer, little flock. Your father desires to give you the kingdom. You know, I I asked a, a good friend of mine that question, what would your life look like as a disciple if you lived completely fearlessly? And he had a long pause, 
took it initially as rhetorical. It's not a rhetorical question. It bears some conversation with each other and with Jesus. And then he said, wow, that would be like my wildest dreams coming true. That would be heaven on earth. That would be the greatest of marriage and parenting and discipleship. It would be complete transparency and complete honesty. Exactly. And that's what Jesus desires for you. Heaven beginning now. Be not afraid, little flock. Your father desires to give you the kingdom. What would your life if you lived completely, fearlessly?